From a young age, Diana was brought up in an orphanage and had to go through the struggles of growing up without parents to turn to. She encountered various hardships but still managed to make her own way in life with no parental support or guidance. Despite the best efforts of the caretakers, they were unable to provide the orphans with the required amount of individual attention and care. Diana was exceptionally popular and thus received more attention from the staff. As a matter of fact, Mrs. Simpson, one of the caretakers, even personally supervised her as she didn't have kids of her own, but really cherished children. Sadly, the woman was too elderly and unwell to formally adopt Diana. However, she deeply cherished their bond. They talked about everything, played together, and felt like true friends. Therefore, when Diana left the orphan, she stayed in touch with her beloved teacher and maintained a friendly relationship with her. Mrs. Simpson always tried to help her. Former students, she often helped them find a job in housing shortly after graduation. That's exactly how it was for Diana as she was about to leave the orphanage, Mrs. Simpson arranged for her to stay at a small, cozy house on the outskirts of the city and found her work at a garment factory. She had an agreement with the management of the factory for the employment of her former students. The young woman liked her job, which gave her a stable income and a sense of confidence in the future. Diana quickly mastered the profession of seamstress and her skills only got better every day. Meanwhile, all that the orphan girl could do in her free time was watch TV in the evenings and read books on the bus on her way to and from work. Diana was in no hurry to make friends because she felt rather uncomfortable in the adult world where there were no nice caretakers who would always help and support her in difficult times. But despite the fact that the woman led an isolated lifestyle, she still managed to meet a good man. It happened on the bus when Diana was returning home for work. Kevin bluntly followed her to the bus stop and taking her by the hand asked, How would you feel if I asked you to have some dinner with me over there in that small cafe around the corner? Diana looked at the stranger carefully and then said, Thank you. I'd be happy to have dinner with you as I'm actually very. The young people spent that evening in the cozy atmosphere, having fun talking and joking around. Time flew by quickly, and when it was already dark, Kevin offered to take the young woman home. Diana gladly accepted this offer, feeling a growing sympathy for this young man. At the same time, the young woman behaved very modestly and didn't give any reason to doubt her decency and. The next day, the young people met again and spent another pleasant evening together. Thus, the rapidly developing relationship received another round of development and prompted Kevin and Diana to realize that they were actually good together. But despite the mutual attraction and feelings, Diana didn't want to rush into a physical relationship and insisted that they should get married first. Maybe Kevin thought that the woman's views were a little old-fashioned, but he didn't say anything out. Because deep down he knew that he fell head over heels for this woman. Honey, I just can't do it like that. I need to meet your parents first. I need our relationship to be as normal as possible, and how can I be sure it'll all be good? What if your mother doesn't like me? Diana said having a hard time dealing with her nerves. She will definitely like you. Don't worry about it. And my grandmother will like you. You too actually think. Kevin answered laughing. The man was sympathetic towards Diana's beliefs and tried to respect them. Kevin didn't know that the teacher from the orphanage always instilled in their students the morals and rules of conduct that were honored by women from high society. Mrs. Simpson believed that girls should be more careful and never rush into sexual relationships with men that weren't willing to marry them. Kevin lived on the outskirts of the city, and when he finally decided to introduce his girlfriend to his parents, her joy knew no bounds, but when the man brought Diana to the old house with ivy-covered walls, she suddenly felt like she'd already been there before. Here, we're going to answer the house now, and the floorboard will immediately make a creaking sound, and then we'll go inside and we'll hear the crackling of the fireplace in the living room. Diana the having experienced a strange idea of Diana. Imagine the girl's surprise when everything that she had just thought about came true in the most inexplicable way. The floorboard creaked and indeed the fireplace was full of burning wood. Oh God, maybe I'm crazy and I have a split personality. Diana thought shivering involuntarily. Diana was overwhelmed by trying to figure out what could be going on. She couldn't get a grip of heat. Deep down, the young woman understood that she had never been inside this house before. 
However, all those disturbing thoughts didn't allow her to concentrate and come to her sense. Honey, are you okay? You turned so pale. Are you feeling well? Kevin asked. He couldn't help but notice that his girlfriend wasn't acting like herself. Thank you. Everything's fine. I just felt a little dizzy. Apparently overexertion has taken its toll. Diana answered lowering her eyes, shyly customarily. After meeting Kevin's girlfriend, his relatives invited her to stay for dinner. Meanwhile, Diana listlessly answered all the questions addressed to her, often speaking out of place, which upset Kevin even more after they've had tea. Kevin's grandmother suggested that Diana take a look at the old family album, carefully examining all the pictures. Diana suddenly saw a yellowed photograph, which depicted a young woman with a baby in her arms, and who is Miss Palmer? Diana asked, pointing to the strange photo in response to Diana's question. The old woman shoot on her lips for a second or two and then turned to the window, clearly unwilling to talk about this topic. However, seeing the questioning look in Diana's eyes, she, this is my daughter from my first marriage, Amanda. She grew up very Friday, and that's despite the fact that she was my first child. The old woman hesitated for a moment and brushing away a bitter tear continued her story. As it turned out, Mrs. Palmer's husband Peter was a heavy drinker in his youth and didn't live to be 40. His eldest daughter absorbed all the negativity that filled the soul of the callous and closed-minded. Amanda didn't want to work and spent her days and nights with countless boyfriends at restaurants and nightclubs. A year and a half after the death of her husband, Olivia Palmer married for the second time and gave birth to her second daughter, Rachel. At the same time, the loving mother tried to make sure that she treated both of her children equally, never favoring either one of them and always dividing everything fairly between. Nevertheless, the two sisters grew up completely different. Rachel was responsible and hardworking, while Amanda had a rather bad temper. There were rumors going around the city saying that Mrs. Palmer's oldest daughter had several children whom she'd abandoned right in the hospital. Having shared this past, the old woman began to cry covering her face with her hands, barely managing to get a grip of herself. Olivia Palmer continued, Amanda kept only one baby. Her name was Sally, a tiny, beautiful baby. She was a miracle baby. The little girl spent her nights with us until she turned about four years old because we didn't want her to witness her mother's drunken antics. And then Amanda moved somewhere with yet another one of her boyfriends, and she took Sally with her. And no one has seen them ever. Amanda's house is still there empty, and we don't know if she and her daughter are even alive. Having listened to the old woman's story, Diana hugged her thin shoulders to provide at least some comfort. She understood how difficult it was for Mrs. Palmer to relive the events of those terrible years. Diana tried her best to keep herself together and not to burst into tears when the old woman continued her. As it turned out shortly before the disappearance of her sister, Rachel, gave birth to a son, Kevin and all the attention of the relatives turned to him. That's why at first, no one paid much attention to the fact that Amanda had disappeared. She used to move from one place to another, actually pretty often, but she always returned to her parents' house, where she was always welcome and could get. And when they realized that she wasn't coming back, it was already too late, but that's not the main part. Amanda turned up a month ago, she called from London. She said that she had married a millionaire and had everything she could ever need, said Kevin's mother who had been silent before. How was that? She turned up. Diana whispered in surprise, just like that. She was always an adventure seeker. She left Sally at the orphanage and moved to. But now she has changed her mind and wants to find her daughter. She said that she had a lead. Apparently, Sally has a different name now, and she recently graduated from the orphanage. Finding her wouldn't be all that hard for a private detective, Rachel answered Diana's eyes, filled with tears, unable to contain them any longer. The girl started crying and recoiled from, no need to look for anyone, I'm Sally. I remember everything now. Diana said stammering on every word. That's when the woman told everyone that when she was about to graduate, the caretaker admitted that Diana had a different name. When she came to the orphanage, it was Mrs. Simpson who gave Diana the name that she bears to this. Hearing the woman's confession, Kevin turned pale and put his head in his hands. He realized that Diana was his half-sister all the time they were dating. Consequently, 
the romantic rendezvous became a family reunion. Luckily, Diana and Kevin hadn't decided to take things further with each other yet or else they would have felt embarrassed and sorrowful. When a night drew to a close, Kevin and Diana gave each other a warm hug like siblings. Then they rejoined their parents at the table and continued to flip through old pictures in the family album that had recently revealed an intriguing family mystery. 